Hello, welcome to this section of Mastering Statistics. In this section we're going to cover the uh, idea known as Chebyshev's Theorem. Uh, Chebyshev's Theorem is uh, a theorem that when you read it in your book, uh, most people don't understand it when they first read it. Their eyes glaze over and it looks very complicated, especially with a name called Chebyshev's Theorem. Uh, it just sounds hard, okay? And so there is a little bit of understanding to it, but I promise you if you just give me five minutes, I can explain exactly what it means and you'll be able to solve some problems, which is kind of the point here. Um, the main deal with Chebyshev's theorem is, if you remember in the last section, I explained to you standard deviation for bell-shaped distributions followed a nice rule. We called it the empirical rule. And we said 68% of the data lies in one standard deviation about the mean, and then we had 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean, and so on. That was a rule of thumb. That's what empirical rule means. It means that it's not exact, but it's, it's usually true for large data sets with bell-shaped data. So for the problems that we've done previously, it was always stated that the data is bell-shaped. All right, And that empirical rule applies, uh, and it lets you kind of gauge what the standard deviation means for that data. Chebyshev's theorem is a rule of thumb that tells you what the standard deviation means, the same as before, for data that's not bell-shaped, okay? For data that's not bell-shaped. So that's the main difference. So if you remember back to the last section, the ways in which we were using it to make some estimations about, um, you know, about those problems we solved, Chebyshev's theorem is going to do the same thing. It's just a little more broad. It allows us to apply kind of a rule of thumb when data is not bell-shaped. Now, I will say that in most cases, your data will be bell-shaped in most cases. So this is not quite as important, in my opinion, as the empirical rule that came before it. Uh, but it is important. The other thing is Chebyshev's theorem is not exact because it depends on the exact shape of your distribution. You know, we had this bell-shaped, right? Well, there are other shapes out there that might, that might be going on in certain other populations that you might study. Who knows, it might be rectangular distributions or whatever. I mean, it's just impossible to say ahead of time. So Chebyshev's theorem is not, not as exact as the other rule that we've used. And also, Chebyshev's theorem only gives us a minimum that applies. In other words, it doesn't tell us that 95% is going to fall between this or this. It gives us a lower value. Chebyshev's theorem is going to tell us at least X percent is going to fall between one standard deviation and so on. So it's going to give us a lower, a lower boundary on what could be true. It's not going to be as exact, so it's not as useful as the other empirical rule. So, but we still need to learn it and use it. Now, there is a lot of words to Chebyshev's theorem, and I've already written them on the board, so I'm going to slide this back and you're going to see a wall of text. You've got to just kind of break through that and realize that, trust me, when I tell you it's not going to be hard, it's not hard. So just read it with me, I will explain it to you, and then we will go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Chebyshev's theorem right now. And here is what it is. Chebyshev's theorem says, let's just read it, the percentage of the data that lies within k standard deviations, I'll explain that in a minute, is at least, I'll explain that in a minute, 1 over, one over k squared for k greater than 1. That is the actual theorem. What's below here is a couple of um, you know, examples of it, I guess you might say, quick examples. So, usually when we're trying to apply these empirical rules, we're trying to figure out, you know, within one standard deviation, within two standard deviations, within three standard deviations, how many percent, how much percent is going to lie between the boundaries there, between two standard deviations, let's say. So the way Chebyshev's theorem is written is it says the percentage of the data that lies within k standard